Hello and welcome to Leaflet Educational Research Made Approachable. Today we are discussing an article from AERA Open titled The Effects of English Learner Classification on High School Graduation and College Attendance. Students classified as English learners have maintained lower high school graduation and four-year college attendance rates in the United States since the classification was created. There are more than 4.8 million ELS English learner students in U.S. public schools. Only 67% graduate on time and less than 20% attend four-year colleges after graduation. The goal of this research is to identify the causal effects of initial EL classification on high school graduation and college enrollment. There are federal and state laws requiring school districts to offer language support to ELS. Within this context, EL students test annually for reclassification as fluent English proficient. A passing score on this yearly assessment yields complete integration into the standard coursework and curriculums of the school in question, but often completely forfeits all support for English learning. Despite this drastic shift, reclassification may be important to the academic outlook of EL students, because English language development courses can crowd out other content courses and classification as an EL student can cause lower expectations for academic achievement from teachers, administrators, and often the student himself. It is important to note here that reclassification assessments are largely formed at the state level and therefore may not align well with the curriculum and instruction students are receiving in the actual classroom. Now there are two key questions to be addressed by this research. What is the causal impact of initial EL classification on students' high school graduation and college attendance? And what is the causal impact of maintaining EL status after each grade between third and eighth grades on EL students' high school graduation and college attendance? The findings are largely underwhelming, though the guidance such data can provide for future research efforts is helpful. Johnson, our researcher, found that initial EL classification upon district entry has little impact on four-year and five-year high school graduation, as well as on college attendance. Furthermore, maintenance of EL status after eighth grade did not significantly impact high school graduation rates or college attendance. However, among those who did attend college, students who maintained EL status beyond eighth grade were 16.3%, I don't know why I almost said 12, 16.3% more likely to start college at a four-year university. They were also 10.6% more likely to enroll full-time in their first college term. Some interesting additional findings are worth noting here. Johnson found that ELSs who do not reclassify before the end of elementary school are very unlikely to ever reclassify, and that reclassification in fifth grade may improve the probability of on-time graduation. She also found that high school ELSs had slightly lower GPAs on average than RFEPs, but were just as likely to enroll in advanced science courses, the RFEPs being the uh, proficient English learner classification earlier. I'm not sure, I don't remember exactly what that stands for, but that's what it means. It is also important to note that the study took place in a California school district. California is a unique context in terms of its educational policy and its massive influx of immigrants in comparison to many other states. Johnson's study sample also included a large group of ELSs who primarily use Chinese or other Asian languages at home, as well as a substantial number of recent immigrants. Further research in other districts and other states would be helpful, as would an eventual investigation of the relationship between EL status and college completion. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed it. You can go to our website, leaflet.wordpress.com, sign up for the mailing list and all that jazz. Stay tuned for this week's Today in Education episode. We've got some juicy stuff coming up. And join us, if you haven't yet, for our Friday book study. We're reading How Writing Shapes Thinking. We're on Chapter 7, but some of the chapters are pretty short, so you haven't missed a whole lot. Thank you so much for listening, and never stop learning. Have you thought about making a podcast of your own, but you're not sure where to begin or what the process looks like? Well, I use Anchor because it is the easiest way to make a podcast. They give you everything you need in one place for free, which you can use right from your phone or computer. Their creation tools allow you to record and edit your podcast so it sounds great. 
They'll distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard everywhere, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and many more. And you can easily make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. So download the Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started.